I am about to do something incredibly stupid. I am about to talk honestly and openly about Star Citizen. Now, before you dislike the video and leave um, mean comments or death threats, just hear me out. You know, we're, we're all gamers. We're all members of the same team. We're all fans of gaming. So uh, just hear what I have to say. And if at the end of the video you think, oh, no, that wasn't that bad, then you can leave in peace, no bloodshed. But if you still disagree with me fervently, then you can dislike and leave mean comments. And you'll have known what I said, so you can leave even wittier comments and even more creative death threats. So um, I encourage you to, to at least hear me out. I, I don't think you're going to be upset with what I have to say about Star Citizen. Um, but nonetheless... I want to just be completely honest about it. Now, all of this started with me thinking about disappointments I've had in gaming. All right. Now, I've been disappointed by a lot of games, especially recently, it seems. I've been disappointed by the whole Mafia 3 debacle with uh, its just in general lack of quality. They seem to uh, focus on this grand narrative of racism and, and you know, St. Louis in the 60s or New Orleans in the 60s. Uh, and, oh, it's, it's going to be so edgy and everything. And then they kind of forgot to make a fun game. It happens, but nonetheless, it was disappointing. Or Just Cause 3. When the initial release of the game was so glitchy and buggy, I couldn't play it. Played it for 25 minutes and had to return it to the Steam store. Incredibly disappointing. Um, or going back to even Fallout 4. Covered that game for six months, even before it was announced to be in existence. I was covering it, um, covering speculation and all that. On this channel, when it came out, I still found it disappointing. Um, I, I've been disappointed by a lot of things, but with every disappointment, there typically is a savior. There's a messiah game to the Luciferian game, right? There's a good to the bad, there's a yin to the yang. Um, and that's typically true. Like usually when I'm disappointed about a game, another game comes out that I'm like, oh, well, why was I excited about this one? This one's way more awesome. And I think that just like... Uh, City Skylines was the messiah to Sim City. I too think that Star Citizen is going to be the messiah, or or essentially City Skylines to No Man's Sky, just as uh, uh, City Skylines was the messiah to to um, Sim City. I think Star Citizen is going to be the savior to No Man's Sky. Now, why do I think this? And uh, do I have anything else to say? Well, yes, I do. Um, why do I say this? I think this because No Man's Sky made a lot of lofty promises. And it was the same sort of um, uh, attempt at big lofty promises, big things. We're going to do this. It's going to be a limitless universe. It's going to be incredible. It's going to be amazing. And then it just didn't deliver. It didn't uh, actually deliver the promises. Just like we saw with SimCity, where they said this is going to revolutionize the whole simulation uh, genre. It's going to be amazing. And it looked really good. And then it came out and it was so bogged down with DRM. And, you know, the servers were crashing. The gameplay wasn't very good. And there were glitches galore. And it, they just expected you to buy it and be okay with it. And then City Skylines came out later and was the answer to everyone's prayers. It was what they had wanted SimCity to be. It had bigger maps. It had more features. It was not glitchy. It was. Uh, it had all this mod support. It, it was everything they wanted. It was the savior, really. It was the yin to the yang. It was the light to the darkness. I like how we're talking like philosophically about video games. <laughs> it entertains me. But with uh, No Man's Sky, I think they made a lot of promises. And I think they didn't deliver on hardly any of them. I don't think that th that's even an opinion. I think that's a fact. Uh, and I think Star Citizen is coming along, making these promises, making these big lofty um, assertions of things that they're they're going to do and that they can do. But the difference is, I think that Star Citizen is much better poised to actually deliver on them. Now, don't get me wrong; I don't think the game is going to deliver on all of the promises 
immediately when the full thing is released or when Squadron 42 comes out. Um, I, I don't think it's going to meet all those expectations, but I think over time it's going to eventually meet them. And I think it's going to end up being what everyone wanted to be. Regardless of what they expected, it's going to fulfill all of those um, wants. It's going to satiate the desires, so to speak. And I think it just is going to take some time. And as a result of that, I think it's important to check uh, your expectations and your hype of about the whole Star Citizen thing. I can't even call it really a game because it's really much larger than a game. It's much bigger. It's broader. It's multiple games, really. And uh, with Squadron 42, I think it's important to check your expectations. Don't expect this narrative-driven thing that, that's going to redefine narrative storytelling. You know, it, it'll be a fun little romp in the, the game world, and it's going to be, oh, yeah, no, that was fun, yeah. But don't expect it to be this revolutionary thing. Don't expect it to be CD Projekt Red-level storytelling. You know, don't, don't expect that. It's just unrealistic to expect that. And is that saying anything bad about Star Citizen? No, it's just trying to be realistic about expectations. That way, if the game comes out and is likely just not as good at storytelling with Squadron 42 as um, some of these other narrative driven games then you're not surprised but you can still enjoy it whereas if you expected it to be this redefining thing you're going to be disappointed and if it comes out and it is an amazing storyteller and it does redefine narrative storytelling in video games then you're still amazed and you're blown away whereas if you were expecting it it's barely meeting your requirements so i think healthy expectations uh, is very important when it comes to a lofty game which has lots of of lofty goals. I think it's important to check your expectations. I think it's healthy, and I think it will make the game that much better when it comes out because it'll be wonderful either which way. Whereas if you expect this amazing definition of perfection uh, in ones and zeros, you're going to be disappointed because there's the game is so huge. It's so huge that it's impossible by definition to meet everybody's expectations, especially during the first initial release of whatever it is that you're looking at. And so I think it's important to just manage your expectations. Um, I, I don't think that's an absurd thing to say. Some of you might disagree with me on that, but if you have any thoughts on this, please let me know uh, down in the comment section below. I love reading your comments, even the snarky ones. It, it's entertaining nonetheless. Um, but if you like the video, smash that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. Check me out on Twitch and Patreon, all of those. I'm going to be doing a lot more live streaming uh, coming up, especially around the holidays once school gets out. So make sure that you're following me for that. We're going to be doing some pretty exciting giveaways. If you've been following the channel, you might know what one of those giveaways is going to be. But nonetheless, thank you for watching. I love each and every single one of you more than you could possibly know. Peace out. Love you. Bye.